Hey, Parker Woods friends. Uh, it's Tuesday. That means I've got another art project video for you. Uh, today we're going to be doing a little paper weaving. Uh, that's a project that some of you have done in the art room and some of you have not. Those of you who've done it before, go ahead and do it again. The more that you practice, the better you're going to be, the more you're going to cement that skill for you. Plus, it's just a fun way to exercise your brain, make a little bit of art, and I have a fun idea of what you can do with this piece of art afterwards. Um, and those of you who haven't, this is a great time to practice and try. So some of you just didn't get around to this part in our projects this year. Uh, some of you, it's going to be something we're going to do first thing, first quarter. So this is going to be a really great way for you to go ahead and get a little bit warm up practice and make sure that you're ready once we get into the art room. Uh, the supplies you're going to need to do your paper weaving, we're going to use two different pieces of paper. Okay. You might want a third. I'm going to show you at the end something you can do with your uh, project. So you might want a third piece. We'll see. You're going to need something to color with. Um, I went ahead and used crayons. And I got a lot because I want a lot of bright colors. One of the things I did with mine, and I want to encourage you to do this because this will make sure that your paper weaving stands out, is I divided my crayons into two piles. All right, this is my first sampling of crayons. Hopefully in your head or out loud, you're already screaming exactly what type of colors these are. And I bet most all my friends remember these are my warm colors. Which means that in my other pile, I have my cool colors. So I divided those into two separate piles. I'm going to use one pile to color in a design on one of my pieces of paper. And then I'll use the other pile for my other piece of paper. That way they're going to be very distinct, different pieces of paper. So when I cut them into pieces and weave them together, I'm going to be able to tell the differences between my two pieces of paper. Also, in order to do this project, I'm going to need some scissors. Look at me here holding my scissors very carefully at the bottom. When I use my scissors, my fingers go in the big hole, my thumb goes in the little hole. And when I cut, remember that this hand has a very important job. This is my helper hand. This is my safety hand. This hand holds my paper steady. And this uh, project, it's not as important. We're not really turning our paper. This is the hand that would turn my paper to help me cut. This hand just has the job of holding my paper very still while I cut, cut, cut. Okay, then I'll hold them carefully and set them back down out of the way. Now, last thing, I'm going to need a glue stick, a bottle of glue, whatever type of glue you have is going to work. If you don't have glue, you could probably even use some tape to secure the ends down after you weave. Those are the projects we need. Now I think it's time to get, or the, those are the supplies we need. Now I think it's time to get started. All right, so I have the materials I need to get started. I went ahead and grabbed my crayons. And I might use some markers too, but I went ahead and started with crayons. Um, and I divided them already into my two piles. Uh, remember, we're gonna color two different sheets of paper, one with warm colors and one with cool colors. So if we're looking at the color wheel, remember we're gonna divide the color wheel in half and on one half, we're gonna have our warm colors, right? Those are our reds, our oranges, our yellows, and all those little mixture colors in between are tertiary color blends. Then our cool colors, our greens, our blues, and our purples. And again, all of those little tertiary colors in between. So one of the ways, remember, that we can remember which is which are warm colors. We like to think about fire and Sun, and that helps us to remember those colors are the warm colors because those are things that make us feel warm. And our cool colors are those calmer colors, the green and blue. Blue gives you that kind of chilly, cool feeling and the purple as well. So um, we're going to get started first 
I want you to fill each page just kind of with a colorful design. It can just be a gradient where I go from one color and slowly fade. So kind of start with my reddish and fade into my yellows. I can do some squiggly designs. You can pretty much do any type of thing you want. Just go ahead and start to color in your pages. All right, now that I have my two sheets colored, I'm ready to move on to the next step. First thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to decide uh, which of these I'm gonna cut all the way into strips and which one I'm gonna stop cutting when I get to, towards the top so that I can turn it into my loom as I weave my two pieces together. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one into my loom, which means I'm gonna make uh, five different cuts. And what I'm gonna do so I know to stop myself is I'm gonna go ahead and just fold a little bit down on the top here, just, just maybe half an inch. Um, and then I know when I get to that little fold mark that that's gonna be where I'm gonna stop cutting so I don't end up cutting this piece all the way apart. This one, I'm gonna go ahead and on the shorter end, the width, I'm gonna go ahead and cut um, lots of little strips all the way down and those are going to be my pieces for weaving. Okay, so I took my scissors and very safely, I cut my one into lots of, my warm colors are now into my strips. You can see where I stopped. I kind of half inch or inch from the top and I cut as even as I could all the way to the top. Obviously, if you wanna make this super duper even, you're probably gonna wanna use a ruler or you can ask an adult to help kind of draw some nice neat lines for you and then you can cut right alongside of them. And the more planning that you do for your work, the nicer and neater that it's going to turn out. Now it's time for me to start weaving. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my first strip and weaving is kind of a simple process of going over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And I'm just gonna repeat that. And then on my next strip, I'm gonna go opposite and it's gonna turn it into kind of a plaid or checkerboard pattern. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed it through and as I feed it through, I'm gonna lift one up. So it went under my first one, now it's gonna go over my second one, then I lift this one up and I start feeding it through some more. It's gonna go over this one, the next one it goes under. It's gonna go over, then under, and finally over. And I'm gonna shimmy it up to the top there. Okay, my first one is done. Time for my second one. Now remember, I want to go the opposite way. I don't want it to match up. I want it to be opposite. So since it went under this one, this time it's going to go over that one. So I'll go over there and under, over, under. Over, under, over, under. Okay, I'm going to slide it up right underneath my one in front of it. And you can see how it's opposite. I have a checkerboard of warm, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool. And then down here, it's the opposite. Warm, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool. Okay, so my cool colors are opposite each other, making that checkerboard. All right, for my third strip, I'm gonna make it match my first strip, right? So since it's under here, it's gonna be under on this one as well.
Let's slide it up. Okay, see my checkerboard, here it goes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish weaving, but I'm gonna speed it up. All right, so I ended up with a couple spares because I'm not gonna quite go all the way to the bottom. And obviously since I cut my strip up here, don't cut to the top, that's kind of where my extra two are there. So I'm gonna set those off to the side. I might find something else fun to do with that. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna use my glue stick. I need to glue the tabs down on the ends. Otherwise, when I pick this up, my pieces are just gonna fall right out. So I went ahead and I made sure they were all scooted up as much as I could. That allows me to get the most out of here as possible. And now I'm gonna start to glue the tabs down. So I'm gonna start on one side, just putting a little glue. I don't have to do all the strips in here. If I just do the ends, that's gonna be just enough. Now I'll go to this side. All right, I'm gonna flip it over because I have little tabs on the back side too. If I glue these down, another way it's gonna help this all stay together. Okay, the last thing I wanna do is the ones at the end are open. So I do wanna glue every tab down on my bottom row. And then I don't have to worry about the ones that are in the middle. All right. There we go. I have one full piece here and I've made my warm color, cool color. You can see how they end up opposite each other. That checkerboard pattern, that warm, cool, warm, cool, all the way down, how it alternates each row to make the checkerboard. And I have a bright, beautiful color paper weaving. Weaving is one of those really great skills that we're gonna continue to build on. Uh, some of my classes went ahead and already did a paper weaving this year. Those of you who didn't get to, don't worry. We will uh, keep working on our paper weaving and um, one of the plans for next year, which would have been for fourth quarter, but now it's definitely next year, is we're gonna take our weaving into some different mediums. We are going to use some yarn and make a couple different types of looms to create different types of weavings next year. So this is a really fun skill project to practice because we're gonna get a lot of use out of it in the art room. All right, we weaved our paper. We colored it in, we cut it in sections. We did our over, under, over, under to weave our warm, my warm color strips into my cool color loom. Then I used my glue to glue down the edges. So, I'm left with my piece of artwork. So this Sunday, do you know that it's Mother's Day? Maybe you didn't remember. This is a great reminder. I'm gonna take mine and I'm actually gonna turn mine into a card. But on the back, 
the way that it's crisscrossed, it's going to make it kind of difficult to write. So I'm actually, this is what my third piece of paper is for. I'm going to glue in my third piece of paper after I fold my paper weaving in half. I'm going to glue in my third piece of paper and it's going to give me something to write on so I can turn this into my very artistic Mother's Day card for my mom. And I'm going to go ahead and mail this to her. And if she watched my video, then she already knows what I'm getting her for Mother's Day. <laughs> well, I hope you had fun doing a little bit of paper weaving. There's so many different things that you can get out there and weave. We're going to do a lot of weaving with looms. Uh, coming up first quarter of next year when I finally get to see your faces in person. But I can still see your faces now because you can go on Flipgrid and you can film a video response and show me the art that you made. You can also just have your parents take a picture of me, of you, not me, of you with your artwork and you can send it to me. You can send it to me via email. You can post it in response to this video. I always love to see the artwork that you're making, and I'm so glad for the friends who are already sharing artwork with me. Also, one more reminder, on my Facebook page, and I sent it via email to every email I could find for parents in PowerSchool, so if you don't have an email in PowerSchool, please add it. It's a really helpful way for me to make sure you get all the information I'm trying to share or follow me on the Facebook page. But um, this Thursday, uh, 2 o'clock on Google Meets, I'm going to be drawing with my kindergarten through third grade friends who want to join. Um, all of the link information was shared on the email as well as shared on my Facebook uh, teacher page, Miss Tess Makes a Mess. And then my fourth, fifth, and sixth grade friends can join me at two o'clock on Friday, again on Google Meet. And the codes that you need for each of those um, are shared in event pages on Miss Tess Makes a Mess as well as um, in the email sent out through PowerSchool. I hope you are all well. I can't wait to have an opportunity to draw with you. Hopefully I'll see you on Google Meet later this week and I'll get to see your faces and say hi to you then. Miss you. Bye.